Hi guys and welcome to Crystal Palace Park and welcome to a tech special of the weekly vlog. So for all of you bike geeks out there, listen in because we are about to run through my pro bike from the Commonwealth Games this year. Now if you're wondering what this is, well this is one of cycling's most historic and respected brands. It is Colnago and it is the C64. Now I am a real cycling romantic. My heart beats for the sport and I absolutely love the history. Now when it comes to cycling super bikes, for me there's only one and Colnago epitomizes all of that and especially the C series. For me this is like this is like the Ferrari 458 Italia of the bike world and I am absolutely in love with it. Now one thing I absolutely love about the C64 is its lugged frame design. Now what that means is each individual part is made separately. Now most frames these days are a monocoque design so they're one piece, they're chucked in a mould, in the kiln and then they come out. Whereas these, these are separate parts. Whether that be the down tube here, the top tube, or these lugs. And then they're bonded with aerospace glue, which has a tensile strength up to one ton. Now, before I talk you through my specific bike measurements, I thought I'd discuss a little bit about frame size, because frame size is something which often a lot of people get wrong. Now, I started off my career on a 56 centimetre frame, believe it or not. And bear in mind I'm 5 foot 9 now, let alone when I was 16 years old. Well, it's a miracle I even managed to fit on that bike. But I downsized for a number of reasons. Firstly, I realised how much easier it was to get the right fit on a smaller frame. And secondly, well, I realised I had far more control over the bike when I had a smaller frame and a longer stem. This made it far less twitchy, so on those technical descents and tight criteriums, it gave me that much more confidence. Now, Colnago offer a huge array of frame sizes, and it's something the company prides itself on, saying that it's got a frame for absolutely anybody out there. Mine in particular is a 48 sloping top tube, they also offer horizontal top tubes, which I know are a bit of a thing of the past in the industry, but there are some traditionalists out there which still love them. So when you're choosing your frame size, what are the most important things to look out for? Firstly, is your top tube length, and second, it's your head tube. Both of these are fundamental in allowing you to get the perfect fit. Now I have had a number of bike fits over the years, but beyond that point it's very important to stay in tune with your body. I used to ride a 75 centimetre saddle, but after a number of back related injuries, I reduced the saddle height to just 72 and a half centimetres, which felt massive at the time. But ultimately, this is what cured my injury. It helped me engage my glutes, put less stress on my back, and engage my core, and made me far, far more powerful on the bike. So now we have four key bike measurements. We have saddle height, like we've already talked about, and we have saddle setback. Now, this is really important because it positions you over the pedals correctly. Now, the longer limbed you are, the more setback you're gonna have. Me being quite short, I have quite a shallow setback at only five centimetres. The other two really important measurements are the tip of your saddle to the centre of your stem and the tip of your saddle to the end of your shifter. Now this determines your reach and for me it's 55 centimetres to the stem and 68 and a half centimetres to the end of the shifter. So while we're on the topic of specific bike measurements, let me help you get yours. Now, if you don't have a bike fitter to hand or anywhere nearby, here are some DIY top tips on how to do just that. So let's start off with saddle height. It's obviously one of the most important ones to get right, so we'll start there. All I want you to do is stand next to your bike and I want you to measure that saddle up against your hip. Now, once you've done this, lock it into position jump on the bike 
and then I want you to lower the pedals to the vertical position like you can see here. And I just want you to rest your heel on the bottom of the pedal. Now, if you've got it correctly, you should have an ever so slight bend in your knee with your heel on your pedal. Now, once you clip your foot in, it will feel a lot lower than it was before, but believe me, you'll get a lot more power out of it. Saddle setback is a slightly more trial and error game. Once you've got your saddle height set, jump on the bike and go for a pedal. You're gonna be moving the saddle fore and aft until you get your knee tracking through the ball of your foot through the forwardmost position on your pedal stroke. So we have the saddle height and we have the saddle setback, but how do we get the reach? Now, if you've got the right frame size, we're gonna change this using the stem length. What we're aiming for is to have a slight bend in your elbows when your hands are on the hoods and you're sat back in the saddle. Now you can get stems of a variety of different lengths, anything from 60 millimeters all the way up to 140 millimeters in five millimeter increments. So there should be a stem out there for you. Bike measurement advice done. How about we go and check this beauty out? Now, I'm gonna start you off at the frame and then we're gonna move through the finishing kit, the group set, and some cool little features which make my bike a little bit different from everybody else's. Now, the Colnago C64, I could probably talk all day about this thing and my love affair for the bike, but I won't bore you with that and I'll cut it short. So, what do I love about the C64? It's lugged frames, it's aesthetic beauty, but I also love the innovation. It's borrowed some technology from Colnago's other models, the V2R, it's a monocoque climbing frame. And this has a slightly more aero seat mast combined with the traditional designs. So for me, best combination of tradition and modernization. Moving on to probably my favorite feature of this bike, the cockpit setup. Now I've used a lot of bars over the years, anything from Specialized to Bontrager or FSA, but eventually I found my love and I found the one for me, and that is the Data Deeps. Now all of you cycling thoroughbreds out there will recognize these bars because all of the great champions of the sport have used them and they have won more races than anything else out there. Now the thing I love about these bars most is the variability on position. As you can see, my hand just sits effortlessly in the bar, yet this flat section on the drop, I mean, this means that I can spend all day there and in a race, when you're trying to get aerodynamic, this is a really, really good thing. But for a superbike bar, you'd be surprised at how much these cost. They are actually aluminium, and you can pick the combination up for about 80 pounds, which is an absolute steal for a piece of cycling history. My group set, as you can see, it is actually a mix of Shimano Durace and Ultegra. And there is a reason for this, because this bike is so light, it came in under the UCI weight limit and I needed to add weight in a subtle way. So you might be thinking, what gearing did I use for the Commonwealth Games? Well, the course was fairly tough. I mean, there were some flat and fast sections, but there were some pretty tough, steep climbs. So for this, I needed quite good spreading gears. I had a 5339 chainring setup at the front and 11 through 28 cassette at the back. This gave me the big enough gears for the fast sections and the downhills and the sprint at the end, yet I had the variability with the smaller gears so that when the pitch went up, I was able to respond in a good way. So I've done DI2 and I've used other iterations of electronic shifting. And as much as I love it, and I think the technology is amazing, I've always loved the reliability of mechanical shifting. I've had a dead battery too over the years, so for me, at the games, it was not a risk I was prepared to take. So I stuck with the old way and I stuck with cables. So managing effort on the bike is a really important thing. Whether that be in training or in racing, it is imperative. Now, how do you do that? Well, people can use heart rate, but the most popular thing nowadays 
is power. I run an SRM. It's an SRM Durace 9000 crank set and I run it with an SRM PC7. There is a PC8 out which I love and I also have but for racing I like the simplicity, the compact design and most importantly the lightness of the older PC7. Now for the wheels I have the Vision Metron 40s. These are the best combination between aerodynamics and lightness coupled with a 28 millimeter clincher tire. Now for the games I ran 25 millimeter Vittoria courses which offered supreme speed and incredible grip but for the harsh winter roads I'd recommend going for a slightly wider tire for increased comfort. One really cool feature that I love on this bike is Colnago's own branded bottle cages. They are master engineers themselves and they designed something to sit perfectly on their frame to hold the bottle tight, that they're light and they're aerodynamic. So here is a nice little feature to finish off on the wheel skewer and a lightweight wheel skewer no less. Now I put my hand behind it so you can focus on properly so you can really see the detail in the skewer. The lightweight etching on the metal body, the carbon lever, it is beautiful. Now you might be wondering why on earth I have a lightweight skewer when I've just been talking about having to meet the UCI weight limit and adding weight to my group set. But do you know what, there's one reason and there's one reason only for this, it's purely because they are bling as hell. Now from me and this world in Crystal Palace Park, thank you all for watching and if you liked us, give us a thumbs up and subscribe while you're at it for some really cool content coming very soon. Now, before you go, if you have any questions on bike setup and advice, give me a comment and I'll try and get back to as many of you as I can. And while you're there, how about you let me know what your favourite Carnaga bike of all time is?